Hello, my name is Patrick. And my name is Mary. And we're going over the archetypes of the Concrete Shamanism Shadow Work deck. Uh, let's get right into the Ogre archetype. We're just coming from the Tyrant archetype, which is the female version of the Ogre archetype. This is Shadow Masculine, uh, in essence. Uh, so let's take a look at the, the card. This did not change very much no. from the initial index card. No, I mean, it works as Ogre. Yeah, it's just an Ogre. And in fact, all these Ogre cards, they kind of look alike. They do look very similar. Um, Subtle differences in expressions yeah. and, and faces. But... Yeah, well, let's let's take a look at this Ogre archetype from the guidebook. Sure. The archetype of the Ogre represents brute force, ignorance, and the raw, untamed aspects of the human psyche. When coupled with the four aspects, angry, aggressive, frightening, and overbearing, the ogre archetype provides an opportunity to examine how we handle anger, aggression, fear, and dominance. Mm. Uh, this is a really powerful archetype. Uh, so let's talk about what it means to be an angry ogre. It calls on our, it calls on us to examine our relationship with anger. Do we suppress our anger, letting it build up until it explodes, or do we let it out unchecked, causing harm to ourselves or others? This card encourages us to reflect on our anger and seek healthier ways to express it, using it as a catalyst for positive change rather than a destructive force. Mm. So we've talked about this recently where you and I have been doing our own shadow work. Yeah. Helping each other. And we've discovered some things that I know I should be angry about, but I'm I'm not. I've stuffed it way, way down. And and it can, that can also, I know for me, end up being self-directed anger. Yeah. Anger directed towards my where I perceive that I'm dropping the ball or whatever. It's it's it can become very self uh pitying. Yeah. Almost, you know, say angry towards self. Uh, but one of the things to understand is that angry is not a, a a bad emotion. No. You can be angry. Even Abraham Hicks says that an anger is a step up from depression. Yeah. And I've really been trying to follow those teachings more and more in my life about it, there you should be angry over things. Yeah. And if you're not angry over things, then, then something might be wrong. Yeah. And I have a hard time getting angry. So yeah. I'm glad we are talking about this today. But I'm also lucky to have a spouse that's willing to go through some of these healing frameworks where past traumas get revealed. I think it's a key ingredient and a component in every successful relationship, not just marriage, but also friends, coworkers, and everything. Absolutely. If, if somebody makes you angry, uh, you have to express it in some way. Hopefully by doing shadow work, you can express it within the realm of shadow work so it doesn't spill over into your waking everyday life. Now, Merrick, what are, what's an example of how hidden anger can emerge in a situation in life? Um, well, I mean, it can just show up. If you, if you haven't worked on your anger, you could snap at someone who mm -hmm. cares about you, who's trying to help you through something. Mm -hmm. Uh, you could snap at a friend or a, a family member mm -hmm. that's trying to help you get through something. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it's, even though the anger is misdirected cause you, cause it hasn't been addressed at all. Yeah. So what triggers my anger the most is one of the questions of this card upright. What triggers my anger the most? I don't ever ask myself those questions. What yeah. makes me so mad? Yeah. What makes me so angry? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I would have to really think about uh, what triggers my anger the most because I don't know. Let's take a look at this uh, description in the guidebook. Uh, expressing strong feelings of displeasure often as a reaction to perceived wrongs or challenges. I like this perceived wrongs here. Mm. Perceived wrongs. Uh, people do not set out to hurt you. Mm. A lot of people hurt each other through unconsciousness yeah. and not really knowing what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the shadow of this is raged, an unchecked, explosive anger that can be destructive, often without a clear cause and potentially leading to strange relationships or regrettable actions. So how do I cultivate calm and patience? I don't know if I... I will ask myself that question without pulling this card. So I'm going to tell you what triggers my anger the most. Mm -hmm. Pro probably 
dishonesty. Yeah. Uh, minimizing. Yeah. Gaslighting. Yeah. Uh, dry drunk behavior. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff. I mean, that's very that much the same. Very, that makes me angry. That makes me angry. But for me, I know I, I repress that anger a lot and then get, take it out of myself. Like yeah. I was talking about or, or be angry at the wrong people. Not saying that, I, that the anger needs to be directed towards anyone, but I mean, the anger is up the emotional scale from depression, like Abraham teaches. Right. So how can we use this as a catalyst for positive change rather than a destructive force? And I know that you've never seen people more able to get stuff done than when they're angry. Yeah, that's like true. Like you've seen me get angry. That's Ooh, true. I can clean the house when yeah. I'm angry. Yeah, we can get stuff done <laughs> when we're angry. <laughs> let's 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 get mad and so using I guess using that as a fuel, mm-hmm. being aware of our our tendencies to get angry Mm -hmm. and instead of just using that to destroy ourselves or destroy someone else, we can actually put that towards productive energy usage. Absolutely. And if you listen to the, the audio book for Abraham Hicks, the vortex, Mm. you you get this stuff. Like we live in a a world based on flawed premises. Mm. And and really, I want to repeat that so that you hear it. We live in a world based on false premises. Mm. Like most of the stuff that we believe in is not even true. Mm. Think about that. I, 51% of the information you learn in medical school is outdated and in, uh, inaccurate. Mm. Do you see what we're doing here on this planet? We are all ignorant. We are all, we don't know anything that's going on. The only thing that we could possibly know anything about is ourselves. Mm. And when faced with the opportunity to meet ourselves, we tend to cower in fear. Mm. So, so archetypes like this really kind of bring that out. I don't think that we would have had this dis- particular discussion today if, if I hadn't brought that up. No, no. Probably what not. are your, what are your thoughts on? some of the other cards in this sure well let's look through them sure so we have we also have the aggressive aspect Mm. of the ogre yeah and of course the original the concept art and the final art of the card and while we're here um we were just talking about angry people changing things the flavor text for this card is their their passion is a force reshaping landscapes and destinies um, sometimes you got to fight for something you believe in. And sometimes the, uh, the aggressiveness, see, I feel like the, for me, I know the aggressiveness when it's in my shadow, it becomes aggressiveness kind of just for the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's being short tempered or whatever, but if aggressiveness is used as an asset, it can be assertiveness. Mm-hmm. The, the, it can be assertiveness, but, but if you can also be too passive too. The the shadow of this particular card is bullying, using aggression as a tool for intimidation, control, or to inflict harm. Mm. Like bullies suck. They really do. Mm. But a bully, also known as a petty tyrant, will get you to your core issues fast. That's true. So in a way, if you get bullied, they're doing you a favor. They actually have to be the bullies and deal with that. But you get to, to have the benefit of that kind of stuff. Mm. So what's the next one? The frightening, the frightening ogre. ogre. And then finally we have the, the overbearing, overbearing ogre. ogre. That kind of reminds me of smothering in the last suit we Right. We did, we did talk the, about. Uh, tyrant. Yeah. Card. And a question, you know, we could ask here is where in life do I tend to, to dominate? Yeah. So, well, I mean, people have said that you and I are intimidating, which kind of makes us crack up. But I think that it's very intimidating to encounter people who really know themselves. People who do shadow work, it can be very intimidating. So if you're intimidated by these cards, good. Yeah. Good. Uh, I I want you to get to the point where you're not hurting yourself or harming yourself or screwing things up for yourself because you don't know why you feel the way you feel certain things. Mm. And And I would definitely work with a therapist. I myself am in therapy. I am as well. Yeah, I don't think it's, I think for me, therapists are like the sanity in the storm. 
Mm. Like where somebody might be minimizing the why, why I feel a certain way about something. Mm. The therapist would say, well, you're having a healthy, normal emotional reaction yeah, to something that's like true. that. Most of the things that we have are healthy emotional reactions to events in our life. But there's this weird vibe that anger is wrong or mm. fighting is wrong. or And it's not. It's not. The, the wrongness comes when, when it stays in our shadow and we don't even examine that aspect of ourselves and acknowledge that that's a part of us. Yeah. Whether we're overbearing or frightening or aggressive. And, and you know, there's really, you can't really sell your soul uh, to the devil, but you can sell yourself out by not doing what you love. And it's impossible to know what you love until you get to a even playing field or homeostasis with with your emotions and what's in your shadow. So after you work extensively with this deck like us, now you'll be able to enjoy your life and your relationships. Yeah. I know I know our relationship has gotten better due to shadow work. It definitely has. Yes. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is the shaman archetype. Yes, and that is going to be a two-parter. Mm -hmm. Cuz it is a it is a large archetype. It is. And we're excited to explore that with y'all. So see you on the next one. All right. Thank you.